We are here today to face our past and reclaim our lives as survivors of child abuse. We know intuitively or objectively we were physically, sexually, or emotionally abused as children. We believe our abuse affected who we are as adults today. We are determined to remake our lives by taking back what was once taken from us, our innocence, our power, our right to determine who we are and how we live in this world. The adult, while healing from child abuse, will go through three stages, the remembering, the mourning, and the healing. There are many steps to accomplish along the way. The hope being that we go from being victims to being survivors to becoming thrivers. I am an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Now, right now, I am healed, happy, and thriving. But it hasn't always been this way. Back in 2006, I was triggered. Now, a trigger is an emotional or physical sensation that you get that brings up past dormant memories. So back in December of 2006, a disheveled homeless man approached me and said to me, perform sexual act on me, on him. I was scared. So frightened to death, I got into my car and I drove 45 minutes home, shaking from the experience. Now, many of you may have had this happen, and you would have just brushed it off and gone on with life. But within days of this assault, I began having dreams, memories, flashbacks, and nightmares of being molested as a little girl. Within a few years of that, I developed anxiety, depression, I became agoraphobic, and an alcoholic. A six bottle of wine a day drunk. I was drinking back the pain and the memories. I was a mess. And devastated by the reoccurring thoughts and feeling once again a victim, by 2010, I was suicidal. Now, I only have a little while with you today. So it's difficult in that amount of time to describe how horrible it is for a survivor to remember the abuse and to feel once again violated, isolated, and alone. I can talk to you forever <laughs> about my issues, relationships, promiscuity, some cutting, suicide attempts, as well as subsequent hospitalizations and psychological diagnosis. But I'm not, not today. But what I will tell you is that by the time we finish talking here today, at least one adult survivor of child abuse will commit suicide. There are over three million reports of child abuse each year, physical, sexual, emotional, and neglect. Now, when I talk about sexual abuse, I'm including being um, touched, inappropriate, non-consensual sex, online predators, uh, as well as seeing any kind of pornographic images as a child. So what happens to these abused children when they grow up? Well, in jail. 30% of women in jail report having been sexually abused as a child. That number is 62.7% for men being abused as children, which is twice the frequency that's seen in the general population. 60% of survivors and drug rehab programs have reported being abused as children. And psychological damages, 80% of 21-year-olds 
who were abused as children have met the criteria for at least one psychological disorder. Now, some sexually abused children grow up to be sexual predators. And some abused children grow up and abuse their own children, continuing the cycle of abuse. Now, how did we get there? How did we wind up in those circumstances? Well, there's a stigma. And because there's a stigma, we don't tell you. And because we don't tell, you may think this is not happening in your world. But the adult survivors are living with the pain and the guilt and the shame. They are internalizing it, questioning why did this happen to us, wondering why no one helped us, and living our lives with the devastation and impact the abuse has had on our lives. Now, you know what it's like. You go and tell someone some sad, dark, secret, or devastating news, and they say to you, oh, it'll be okay. Time heals all wounds. Or they act as if you're supposed to just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and move on. Well, back when I was 13, the summer when I was 13, nature called and I became a woman. So I went into my aunt's room, unsure of what was going on, and I shared with her. And she gave me the sex talk. And when she finished, I said, hmm, then so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so and -so had sex with me when I was a little girl. And this favorite aunt of mine said to me, girl, you don't go around telling folks stuff like that. You keep that to yourself. And that's what I did. I kept the secret. Now, not all adult survivors are in jail, on drugs, beating or molesting their children. In fact, most often you will find us in your everyday life situation. We are your siblings, your coworkers, your close friends, your teachers, your doctors, and your neighbors. We come from a diverse background of race, gender, nationality, religion, and social economic status. We are you. The thing that most adult survivors have in common is that we just want to heal. Oftentimes, it takes a trigger to happen in the adult life, and it all comes rushing back, a jingling of a key a smell, a sensation. And some of us would go and Google adult survivors of child abuse, child sex survivor, seek a therapist, or have the therapist refer to them as support group. That's what I did. I saw a therapist, I joined a support group, and I did the work. In fact, I started a support group in Atlanta for adult survivors of child abuse. And I've been facilitating those meetings for five years. And what I have found is that the number one frustration amongst survivors is the not being believed when they told. That happened to me. A few years ago, I told, and I was not believed. And remember, at 13, I was told to never tell. So, Oftentimes, someone would bring you some issue or problem, and they don't offer you a solution. Well, I'm not going to do that to you today. In fact, it's my intention to have us on the same page, where you can look to your left, look to your right, behind you, and in front of you, and have a positive, powerful impact on another survivor's life. Since one in four girls one in six boys will be abused by the age of 12. In a group of five, this talk is about at least one or maybe two of us. So I want you to think about the adult survivor of child abuse that you know or that you've suspected all along was abused. And if you are the survivor, I want you to think about yourself. Now, what support 
can you offer to the survivor? Five things. First, believe the survivor. Believe the survivor. And if you are the survivor, trust your memories. Second, do not say, unless you also are a survivor of child abuse, that you know how they feel, because you don't. But what you can offer is this, it was not your fault. Third, become the love, the support, and compassion that all survivors deserve. And fourth, encourage the survivor to get help and to heal. And lastly, the fifth thing, understand that healing is a journey. In fact, I kept a journal through the stages and steps of my healing. And by the time I finished writing the journal, I had written 636 pages. And I call this book, Journal of a Suicide Failed. I encourage all survivors to keep a journal so you can look back over your accomplishments and see the progress you're making. One of the things I say to survivors when they come to their first meeting is this. This is hard work. But I always add, but it's worth it. I am Fire Brown. I'm an adult survivor of child abuse. I'm healed, I'm happy, and I'm thriving. Thank you for your time.